Happy Monday, everybody. It is time for Alpha Flight number 13, uh, the aftermath of Guardian's death. We get a cover with Wolverine and Heather Hudson. And is that John? Oh my, John Byrne is dead? Probably not. Um, okay, sucker, the only way to get to the lady is through me. Now, um, there was a time when you got a lot of Wolverine all over the Marvel Universe, just as you had in previous years, and even through this time period, you get a lot of, um, of Spider-Man everywhere. Popular characters and all that. But uh, this is not just a, you know, uh, a ploy to get readers. Wolverine was part of Department H at one point. Could have been, could have been a member of Alpha Flight. Um, ultimately became a member of the X-Men. But he still was friends with James and with Heather. And so it makes perfect sense that um, after what has happened... That he would make an appearance. And of course, again, what has happened, as we covered in Alpha Flight number 12, was the death of Guardian, James Hudson, the founder and leader of the group. Now, very quickly, before we jump into this one, Marvel Team Up Annual number 7, Spider-Man and Alpha Flight. Again, everybody at some point gets to hang with Spidey. The black suit was brand spanking new. This is just after uh, the events of Secret Wars. And um, this is set between issues 12 and 13. It involves the Collector trying to collect Spider-Man and Marina. And this, you know, what's left of Alpha Flight, obviously. Heather's not there. Shaman is with her. Um, Guardian, obviously, is not there either. So we just have Sasquatch, uh, North Star, Aurora, and Puck, and Marina, um, dealing with the Collector. Uh, stories by Louise Simonson. Um, it's not bad. It, um, you know, the story didn't do much for me just in terms of uh, the Collector. I don't know. I'm not as into those char that character and his shenanigans. Um, I mean, that, dude, that feels like Silver Age DC. Seeing a dude on a magic carpet and all that, but um, but you do get some good elements of the story, and it does a pretty good job of cluing people into Alpha Flight and the internal problems that they have, um, because a big part of the story is North Star wants Aurora's attention. He goads Sasquatch into going berserk, which causes all sorts of problems and could be devastating. And North Star really doesn't care. There's no point where North Star's like, I'm sorry for what I did. It was wrong. Um, and really, Puck is the hero here. Puck and Spider-Man save the day in a large, in a large part. Um, and so I think it does a good job of showing off the Puck character and what he's all about and why he's like, Kind of my favorite character in Alpha Flight. All right, so let's put these aside and let's deal with Alpha Flight number 13. It's been a while since I read these. Gotta say, I'm enjoying just kind of going through them too. Stan Lee presents Nightmare. And of course, look at that. Byrne, Yankus, Higgins, O'Neill, Shooter. The whole Marvel creative team. Sadly taken from us. August 1984 in memoriam and so we have obviously some very quiet moments here we're at james mcdonald hudson's funeral we see alpha flight gathered um i think very well very well done people saying goodbye to heather as they go off to deal with their own lives which i mean i think people who have gone through something like this um, can very easily understand. It's difficult, you know. What do you say? I mean, really, what do you say? And obviously, so you're going to get a whole lot 
from him. She reaches out to North Star, and he's gone. You know, he he had much less of a of a relationship with Guardian than other members of the team. He came a little bit later, and so ultimately, Puck is there. You know, um, comforting her as he as he can, and he leaves, and we see by the tree in the shadows, Logan. Dude, Logan is so cool. And she's on, you know, this this gravestone. And it begins to crack. And suddenly, this burning corpse emerges from it. Alluding to the way that James Hudson died. And Wooly jumps in, pops the claws in Wolverine style and goes straight at it as Heather flees. I love the blank background. It really brings everything to the fore. The burning corpse, I mean, amazingly done. And it looks here at the end that it's taken Wolverine out as she runs away. Maybe some shades of Night of the Living Dead. And she um, she trips. She loses her glasses. She runs. And she's suddenly grabbed by the corpse. And she awakens screaming. You cannot blame her for going through nightmares like that. The Adonac Motor Lodge, not far from Parliament Hill, Ottawa, Canada. Heather. And she's just, no, 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 no. And so Michael T. Youngman, shaman, is there. He comes in. He comforts her. Comes back out. Puck is obviously standing guard uh, over Heather as well. Um, and he says, well, Michael, she sleeps now. It was the same dream. It has been a month since her husband was killed. And still this terrible image plagues her. It worries me much, friend Judd. And so, um, Puck's going to be a real important character in Heather's life. And this is tearing him up, seeing her go through this, you know, and I think Shaman's realizing really just how good a man Puck is, um, through this stuff. And we get the, this is an interesting little exchange. I'm still uneasy about the way you chose to deal with smart Alec. There was little else I could do, Judd. When Alec Thorne looked into my medicine bag, it took his mind. The least I can do is take care of his body until I can restore him to sanity. Reducing him thus seemed the most efficient method. So he's basically reduced him to this tiny little figure. And, uh, Let's be honest. We all know Shaman's got an action figure collection at home. That's that's why I thought of this. He says, I think you missed my point, Michael. Smart Alec was more or less the leader of Omega Flight, and they were directly responsible for Guardian's murder, eh? Carrying him around in your bag while you search for a way to restore his mind seems too good for the likes of him, perhaps. But I am a Sarsi medicine chief, and have been since long before I became Shaman of Alpha Flight. I am sworn to protect and preserve life even such as he. Then you're a better man than I am, Michael Two Youngman. I'd rather see him sharing some of the anguish of the lady in the next room. Perhaps he is, friend Judd, or, yeah, perhaps he is, friend Judd. There is a whole universe beyond the mouth of my medicine bag, a universe in which his mind now wanders alone and unprotected. If the great spirit hears my prayers, smart Alec, smart Alec will not go unpunished. But for now... Let us get some sleep, my friend. Tomorrow is another day. And so the next scene has her meeting with, um, like, their former liaison in the Canadian government. And, um, and so he's unaware of what's happened, and so she lets him know um, that he's dead. And the guy is like, but, but dead? Dead? How it went. I mean, you let me sit here prattling on about my office when you had your your piece to say, Gary. Now I have mine. 
It started with a letter. And by the way, keep in mind, this is very much an issue without a lot of action. That nightmare provided some of that action for those people that need a little bit of fighting every few pages. Um, and so she goes over the story of how it happened that that he was drawn into the trap in New York and attacked. Oh, there's the uh, Secret Wars figures where everybody has a shield and Dr. Doom doesn't have a cape. And what the heck is going on? And so you get the full rundown of what happened to the issue before. Listen, this was standard in old comics. It was very important when these were sold on newsstands, as well as directly in comic book shops and by subscription. But especially because of the newsstands, they wanted to make sure that a person picks this up, he's not going to be completely lost. You needed to be able to pick up these stories right in the middle of things. And so, yeah, they'd burn a page and a half or a couple pages filling you in on what happened because they wanted you to buy it and keep buying it. They didn't want you to pick a book up and be like, I don't know, what the hell's going on? So we get that full thing. And for a long moment, there is silence in the office of the prime minister. And, oh, that was the prime... Sorry, I was thinking it was the... It was the... Uh, liaison. Prime minister. Sorry, eh? You, you mean you actually saw him? Saw him? I saw him blown apart, Gary. I saw him consumed, blasted into ashes, into less than ashes. Heather, that's enough now. As your doctor and your friend, I must insist you stop. Get some rest. I've been resting for a month, Michael. My husband died in the service of his country. I want to know what his country intends to do about it. She ain't messing around. I was afraid you were going to say that next. I wish to heaven there was something we could do, but there isn't, Heather. I don't know if you'll be able to believe or even accept that, but as far as the Canadian government is concerned, James MacDonald Hudson was never anything more than another taxpayer, and not even that for the last ten years. No, wait, before you jump down my throat, let me try to explain. Jim created Alpha Flight as part of Department H, and H was a top-secret extension of the Ministry of Defense. Top secret. I used to be a pretty high-placed official with H, and now I can't even get a real office. Oh, okay, he's using the Prime Minister's office, sorry. Okay, I was right in um, uh, That's because when H was officially closed down, it ceased to exist retroactively, as if it never was. Then you're saying that my husband devoted 10 years of his life to Department H, worked for them, fought for them, risked his life for them more than once. And now that he's actually died for them, you intend to sweep the whole matter under the carpet to toss away a man's life as if it was just so much old paper for the official shredder? It's not like that, Heather. Jim didn't die for Department H. Department H doesn't exist anymore, and he continued Alpha Flight on his own initiative. And yes, I suppose unofficially we supported him. But officially, there's not a blessed thing I can do. Not one blessed thing. Now Puck's going to be PO'd. Well, there's something I can do, eh? I can take a pound of flesh out of your miserable hide as partial compensation. Judd, no. So it doesn't go well. And it really brings up sort of what is the future of this team. Uh, this is a great storyline, and it's a very interesting storyline. And there's a lot of emotion mixed into it, obviously. Um, because of what she saw and what she's dealing with, you know, internally about the death of her, of her husband, somebody she deeply loved, but there's also alpha flight to think about. I mean, why maybe just trash it, maybe ditch it. So they're sitting in this cafeteria after this meeting and Heather says, so despite what Gary said, I suppose that's the end of it. Mac is dead. And without government help, there's nothing in the world to be done about it. Not so, Heather. There are many things yet to do. I do not wish to seem mercenary, but there is the matter of insurance. And here's where a shaman tries to sell her insurance. No. no, Michael, there isn't. Mac had a life insurance policy, to be sure. But in order to collect anything, I have to prove he's dead. And without a body, 
Well, what Gary told us pretty much closes that avenue. Mac won't be legally dead for seven years. So add it all up, Omega Flight is defeated, and the members turn over to the New York authorities. Jackson and Ms. Courtney seem to have vanished, and I have no job. They're eating at JoJo's. And I have no job. I can't simply reclaim my old one. That's been filled. I have no apartment, even though I paid my landlord four months' rent as a hold fee. Well, I paid in cash and neglected to get a receipt. So he's rented the place out again, and I can't afford the place in Brooklyn. So here I am, at the ripe old age of 29, a widow without much hope for the future. But you're not alone, Heather. You have your parents and the rest of Alpha Flight. My parents and I haven't spoken since I ran off and eloped with Mac, Judd. They never approved of my marriage, and I'm afraid my mother is exactly the type to rub my nose in it at a time like this. As for Alpha, without Mac, there is no Alpha Flight. His dream died with him. But don't worry about me. I'm from old pioneer stock. My people work their way across this country, and if necessary, I can do it myself. Because I know what Mac would want, and I'm not going to let him down, whatever else happens. Heather McNeil Hudson isn't beaten yet. All right. You want strong female characters, ladies and gents. There she is. Elsewhere, 14 hours later. Toronto is lar Canada's largest city, a true boomtown sprawling along the shores of the mighty St. Lawrence. And filling in for Metropolis in the old Superman movie, as I recall. And so we see a man on the docks, running, running, and then all of a sudden it looks like something grabs him, pulls him into the water. So what has happened? Well... Do they kind of tell you here? It says, because you demanded it. Marin is back, and she's not alone. Join her with Puck and the mighty Submariner 4 biology class. So this is one of those kind of um, tough issues to do for a vid time. Oh, no, let's get away from that. Um... It's a very talky issue. This is an aftermath issue. And you get these um, after you get a major, you know, crisis event uh, in comic books. You generally have the sort of winding down issue afterwards. Cl cleanse the palate. Sometimes it will be a comical one where the characters get to sort of like do a little R&R, &R, a little rest and relaxation. You know, it'll be a little bit funnier. Kind of, you know, clear the mood. Uh, not so here. Because of what has happened. And, but it does... It does give you a, a, a sort of a, a, an arc in the story, though. Of Heather's having these nightmares. And she's very, probably at least somewhat depressed, you know. And her life's falling apart. You know, I mean, I guess when you get down to it, Jackson got his revenge. Her life has fallen apart like his. But unlike him, she's picking herself back up. She's not going to be defeated. And she's going to go on to bigger and better things. There's your difference, hero and villain. A lot of it's how they deal with, you know, their problems, right? Let me get down to superhero, super villain, or villain origin stories. You know, Bruce Wayne loses his parents. He becomes Batman. You know, whereas a lot of villains had some kind of loss and said, screw the world, I'm going to destroy it. Um, so Heather, very heroic tale for her. She is a great character and she's going to become central to Alpha Flight from this point forward. And was one of my first favorite characters. Truthfully, one of my first superhero crushes when I was like, you know, 13 or so and started reading comic books. Um, I thought Heather, well, I'll go ahead and say it. I thought she was the bee's knees. And I know that's strong language, but I don't mind saying that. So Alpha Flight number 13, an aftermath issue. Uh, what do you think of it? What do you think of it? What do you think of the things that Alpha Flight is going through? I'd love to hear in the comics. Um, great art in this one too. Um, you know, it, in a way, it's easy for comic book 
artists to deal with to do the fights and the super heroics and make them look really cool um but when you get into the stuff where it's people talking and how the camera angles you use and the facial expressions and all of that kind of stuff um i think that's where you really see you know the skill come out in a way can they make it dynamic and interesting in how they present something like this it's very wordy right and i mean you know burns really good and this gets back to like the comic strip you know era of comic books um because comics are wonderful because you can do those big splash pages and you can't do that in comic strips uh, not easily, at least. I mean, maybe in Windsor McKay's day when he has a whole page to work with of a newspaper. Um, but, you know, Charles Schultz couldn't do something like that. And um, I think you see just how good uh, Byrne is here in being able to make an interesting, engaging story without all the super heroic fighting in it. So, woo. Um, that blurred everything out. There we go. So off flight number 13, the aftermath of Guardian's death and launching this second year of Alpha Flight. Um, I enjoyed it. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, maybe think about liking, maybe consider subscribing. Every Monday, I'm doing Alpha Flight issue by issue until the point where I don't want to anymore, but I'm going to probably keep it up for quite a while through 2024. I also post on Wednesdays and Saturdays various pop culture items, um, primarily older stuff, but some new things too. Um, in fact, I should, well, you know what, I'm doing this in advance. I will probably already have posted the video for the thing I was about to announce, so I won't do that. But I do hit more modern stuff as well. Movies, TV, books, uh, comics, toys, games etc. Just a bunch of stuff I like that I want to share with everybody, and maybe you'll discover something you hadn't seen before on the channel. Until next time, though, God bless everybody. Um, try to be kind to one another, and try to have some fun, and I will see you on Dad's Den of Pop Culture. Bye-bye.